Life Church family. Even though we would love to have you here in service with us, we are so glad you could join us online. You're in for an amazing treat. Whether this is your first time online joining us or you're a Life Church regular, this is your official welcome. I pray that today's message blesses your soul and energizes your spirit for the week to come. Now join us for service already in progress. So God, just wanna be with you. We just wanna be with you, Jesus. Chapter 4. 
5, 24 says this. It said, and you said, surely the Lord God has shown us his glory and his greatness. And we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. Some of you have been through fire and yet still experienced his goodness, his greatness, and his glory. Can anyone testify to that? And some of us are in the fire. And I prophetically speak by the word of God today that you will experience his glory and his greatness. We have seen this day that God speaks with man, yet he still lives. God speaks today to you, his children, and his word will make you live. His word will make your bones that feel dry, limber, and flexible. His word will make you run through a troop and jump through a wall, over a wall. His word will let you know that you know that you know he will create a river in the desert and a pathway in the wilderness. His word is life to your spirit. Life to your soul. Oh, is God good life, church? Oh, I need a little louder. We practiced this over the weekend. We need the corners of the world to hear. We need the five boroughs, Maryland, Virginia. We need South Africa. We need Saudi Arabia. We need life, church. Is God good? Is God good? He will never fail, is God good? God is faithful, is God good? He is love, is God good? If you believe is God is good, church, let's get a little undignified for one more second. Can we lift an undignified, hallelujah, an undignified praise? Uh, Lord, you are good. Come on, life church, don't wait for me, lift up your voice. Let me 
say this one last thing. The psalmist said something beautiful. He said, why is my soul so downcast? Why is my soul so sad and heavy and burdensome? And then he said something. He said, hope thou in the Lord. It's like jumping a car. The car is like dead. <laughs> Can't go nowhere. Just don't, won't even start. I'm going to talk to myself because I know y'all y'all got like all together. So I'm going to talk to myself. But sometimes you just feel like you just can't start. And then I speak to my soul. Why are you downcast? Hope in the Lord, your heavenly father. God who is faithful. The same. The same God who spoke life into existence decided to be your daddy. I, my mind was blown as I was worshiping this week. Like, Lord, I'll never get tired of this. Lord, how is it that you see this person? of the millions of people and how is it that you sit on uh, in the heavens and yet you're mindful of me how is it that you created like you spoke like oh <laughs> and yet you cared so much that you gave Jesus to me. Now listen, I don't know about y'all. I'm just telling you my experience. You gave Jesus to me so that I can be in relationship with him. Some of us don't even know what a healthy relationship is. So let me, let me help you out. Relationship. There's an intimacy. I see into you, you see into me. There's a vulnerability. There's a nakedness. And yet you're still committed and love the person. God, you decided to enter a relationship with me. church. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, Life Church, let's be good to each other. Greet your neighbor with a hug and a high five and a sweet compliment and all the love, the good love. see you. God bless you. You all look beautiful. You all look wonderful. We all love worshiping the Lord. We're grateful for his presence. And uh, 
We're going to have a great time today. I'm excited for uh, what the Lord has in store for us. Who had an opportunity to attend our life conference this past two days? Yes, yes, yes. We're so grateful that you attended. And I just want to say thank you for all the uh, prayers and the faith and the giving and the blessing and the serving. And there's so much to say thank you for. Um, I want to just acknowledge again a few people. I want to acknowledge our uh, coordinators, Melissa and Sarah. Come on, let's give Melissa and Sarah a hand for helping with coordinating everything and establishing a good flow. I want to give honor and, and appreciation to Garvey and Maria. Praise God. They were very instrumental in serving. Um, they're not here because they're celebrating their anniversary. So that's awesome. So we bless them. Amen. We're grateful for marriages. Yes, we are. I'm grateful for our worship team, our band. Come on, give it up for them one more time. They really ministered well to us. Amen. I'm grateful for our ushers. Come on, give it up for our ushers who've served. Amen. Our production team in the back, we're grateful for them. Come on, give them a hand. God bless you all. Thank you. Let's give it up for our hospitality team. Amen. They were instrumental in making our guests feel welcomed and creating a nice space in the back. So we're grateful for all those who served on hospitality. Amen. Don't we have an awesome church? Yeah. We're so grateful. We're grateful for all of you, all of you who've planned, who, who've planned, who've prayed, who, who like I said, who's given. Um, we are celebrating the goodness of God in our church. Amen. And how many know it takes effort to, you know, open up the space, keep the space clean. Let's give it up for our maintenance team. <laughs> yeah. Because if you came in here and the place was a wreck, you'd be like, I'm not coming back here. So we have people who are dedicated, even when you're not here, even when you're not in service, people are here uh, preparing for you, cleaning and praying, you know. Give it up for Maybelline, who was here leading evangelism on Saturday, leading prayer at 6 p.m. Yes. Yes. I want you to, I, I'm taking a little time to highlight a few of these things because uh, a lot of times I think people are not really understanding of what it takes to really minister um, and provide an atmosphere where people can be ministered to well. They just kind of show up and, okay, praise God, what do you guys have? <laughs> but people care about you because you're, you're loved by God, number one. And we feel, first and foremost, loved by God. And we feel it's our duty. Our, we're compelled to share that love. And that's, that's, that's our DNA as a church. In fact, one of our core values, our very first one, is loving out loud. And we believe that that's essential so that the body of Christ can grow. And so I can't say enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for all who have been a part of this momentous time. I was sharing with someone last night, like individual people who get older, sometimes you don't like to celebrate your birthday, you know? Some people love to celebrate their birthday. Teray, <coughs> sir, sir. <laughs> I always tease Teray because it's a birthday weekend, I think. I don't know. It's a month. I, I don't even know the date anymore because it just, it just expands. It's ever increasing. <laughs> but she, I love, she's a great example of someone who loves to celebrate life, loves to celebrate her birthday. That's amazing. Amen. And, but yet there are some examples of people who are not so excited about their getting older. They're like, oh another year and maybe they look at their life and like oh I'm not where I want to be or I'm not this or I haven't accomplished that so uh, let's not celebrate you know and the Lord just kind of arrested me to say don't let that be the story of Life Church celebrate everything amen celebrate the goodness of God celebrate the hand of God like Rhea was just mentioning you know we say this a lot or we've said it a lot but it, it, it is something to to note um, making it through a pandemic isn't easy it really isn't easy, you know, and it takes a lot of committed people praying, supporting one another, believing God for the upkeep of, of his church. 
Um, and yet we are here, you know, and we're grateful for, be, for being here. Amen. We're grateful for this space, aren't we? Amen. We're grateful. And as I love to say, the best is yet to come. We haven't even begun hitting this community yet like we're going to. Like, I'm telling you, we're going to hit this community hard. We haven't, we've just been settling ourselves. Okay, I think we're settled now. Are we settled? All right, now we're about to hit this community hard. We're about to really invite people to church, minister the gospel to them, evangelize, share the, I mean, we're going to hit this community. Get ready. God is about to blow in this place something new, and I hope you're on board for it. Amen? Amen. I want to acknowledge a few special people. Um, some of you may know and some of you may not but about a year and a half ago we had a program called ministry training and development it was a two semester course where we took time um, to pour into specific people that we felt had a call uh, to serve in this local house um, what we made clear is that this is not an ordination right ordination is when you're Declaring someone for public ministry on a platform, you know, it's just another level, if you would. But what I think is important is that we as a church recognize people who serve here, who are trained to serve here, and that you can trust to minister to you, trust to pray for you. Um, and so what we've done is we've endeavored to go through a course, two semesters long, teaching about Christology, teaching about healing, teaching about how we got our Bible, how it actually came together, teaching about how to pray for people, how to minister to people, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and so many other things. And why we took the time and why we take the time to do this, because we want to make sure that if you're being ministered to, you're, mini you're being ministered to by people who know what they're doing. <laughs> and so um, I want to acknowledge several people who have completed this course, amen? And we're going to uh, clap for them, and I'm going to pray for them, and, and we're going to just honor their achievement. We're going to honor their achievement, their dedication to learning, to growing. Um, some are not here today, but we're going to still present those who are. Amen? And so I'm going to call first and foremost, Shauna Jones. Come on, give Shauna a hand. Come on up, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to call up Maybelline Rojas. Rhea Shuttleham. Risa Downs. Amen. Now, we had a few others I want to call by name also. We're gonna clap for them anyway. Ulrich Lebrun, come on, give it up for Ulrich. Oh, his wife is here, okay. So I'm gonna, I have his certificate for you. I, I didn't see you back there. We have Garvey McLean. Yes. And also Maria McLean, amen. All right, so these are the people that I'm gonna give you your, well, before I do that, let me just say, I appreciate you all for your dedication. Uh, we remember those Saturdays coming together. There were times where we had, uh, instant, in, like without plan, just spontaneous prayer moments, people just being ministered to very personally. Um, we had times of just edifying each other, building each other up. And I just want to say I appreciate you all. I appreciate your dedication, your love for people. That's what, that's what stands out. Your love for people, your desire to see people minister to, your desire to see people blessed, you know, and you've dedicated yourself to that. And so I just want to let you know we are proud of you. We are proud of you. And this is just the beginning Amen. because I believe that many of you and many of you, you have anointings and graces that you're going to continue to grow in. Amen. And as we continue to make other trainings available, you'll be taking advantage of that. You may take advantage of some of that. And the Lord's going to continue to elevate you where you're able to minister to people in a more authoritative manner. Amen. You know, so we are 
so grateful for you. Extend your hands towards them, please. Father, we are grateful for these four individuals that are standing here and the other three, Lord God, that we've mentioned. And Lord God, we don't take it lightly, Lord God, that they have committed their lives to you, to the service of the kingdom. They've committed their lives to serving people. And Father, I just pray that as we acknowledge their achievement, as we acknowledge who they are and who they are to us, that Lord God, you would continue to exalt them, use them, and let the anointing of the Lord increase in their life. Give them wisdom as they minister. Give them wisdom as they pray for people. Wisdom as they preach the gospel, Father. We just pray that you would give them, Lord God, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Lord, even without measure, I pray that you will bless them, Father. Lord, we bless their children, their home, their families, those, Lord God, that they are in relationship with. Bless them, Father. We thank you for them. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. Amen. Let me give you a... Here you go, Lisa. God bless you. And he's a nice one, otherwise, if, if I say so myself. <laughs> God bless you. Do we have, can we take a picture? Come on, let's all take a picture. some of you have asked me in the past about other courses and trainings um, and it is in our heart to continue to provide that we will uh, we will I believe in the coming year um, that will be something that we would do in the very early part of the year uh, we don't just want to do things just to do it we want to make sure that we're being led that it's the right time it's the right season and and I believe it is so I'm just putting it out there but um, I believe that that's something that you're gonna have an opportunity to be a part of and grow in basic theology and also practical ministry. You know, there's some theology, theology schools that are just focused on the theory of God and the theology and they're just focused on that aspect of it and some are very focused on the actual ministry, the hands-on. Uh, we wanna do a, a combination of both. We want people to feel that they understand the Bible, number one, <laughs> and they also understand how to minister to people, number two. And so uh, this is something that speaks to our heart. Now, I am excited to share a little bit about a fast that's beginning tomorrow. Are we excited about that? Amen. So I'm going to instruct the ushers to begin distributing. Um, and um, I think we have enough, but if we don't, we'll, we'll make something work. Their district, it's online already. Okay, good. So we have it also online at nylifechurch.com. I just take a little time to talk about this fast that we're embarking on. This has been on my heart for quite some time. And so it's a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit more aggressive than last time. Last time we um, had one topic per day. But what we're going to do is we're going to pray several topics every day. The same several topics, but every single day. And we're going to really increase the intensity of it. And so before we get into the, the points and the guides and things like that, let me just focus on the heart of what we're doing here. Uh, the, heart of this, the heart of this fast is to position us to experience. It may not be so obvious from first glance, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you what, why, we free, why we put it the way we did. Thank you. 
So the heart of this is to bring our relationships to a place of health. Some of us in this space, you are in unhealthy relationships. <clears throat> and this fast, I believe, is going to highlight those unhealthy aspects of your relationship. Again, at first glance, you may not see it. It may not look like it is because it's kind of generic. But what I'll be teaching on and what we'll be praying about is the topic of building boundaries that create healthy tensions for your relationships. Boundaries, safeguards, guardrails, places that keep you safe and keep you thriving in love. The reason why a lot of us are struggling in our love life is because we have no boundaries or we don't have the proper boundaries. Sometimes improper boundaries could be we're too restrictive Sometimes it could be we're non-restrictive at all, and both can hurt. And what we're going to do through this fast, we're going to increase, because when you have proper boundaries, you increase a healthy tension for what you have and where you're thrusting forward to. When you break those boundaries, when those boundaries don't exist, you don't appreciate what you have now, and it limits what you're able to go into. So this fast, I believe, my prayer is, is going to really highlight those aspects of our relationship. This relates to married people, single people, people who are dating, people who, might, who are not sure what they want in life concerning relationships. I believe that your heart is going to be stirred to have healthy boundaries, healthy relationships. Amen? And we'll be teaching on this. Most of the fast that you'll see in the guide is not really touching on all of those topics that I just mentioned, but I'll be touching on it in my messages, and I'll be teaching along those lines. And here's what I believe God is doing with us. Here's what I believe God is saying to us. I'm, and I'm committed to doing this for the rest of the year, guys. I am. I'm committed to, to really camping on this, praying about this, setting our hearts for this. I believe if we do this right, and if we do this together, many people... Many, many, many people are going to find themselves in healthy, thriving, fulfilling relationships. It will not only affect their romantic relationships, but also their relationship with the Lord, which is where we start in the guide. Okay? And so let's look at it. The very first uh, point I want to highlight is 545. <laughs> The reason why we have that time designated is because we also have prayer call times. And if you are able to, right, we invite you to call in at several times during the day. And some of you have participated in this when we did the fast last time. And there's someone leading the prayer. So you call in at, at these designated times. And we pray for 15 minutes over the phone. And most of it, you're just listening and you're allowing that person to lead. Uh, but what's happening is you're being stirred up to continue to pray. And we felt it's necessary to do it several times during the day. Hopefully you can make it every single slot, but if you can't, it's okay. We understand everyone has different you know, things going on. Their schedules may be a little different, but participate as much as you can, amen? All right, so at 545, early morning prayer, our focus will be directing our attention towards the Lord, okay? And then there are some scriptures. And so even after the prayer, or let's just say you're not able to come into the prayer call, right? Let's say you wake up at 6.30, 7 o'clock. You missed the prayer call. That's fine. But in the morning time, we want your focus to be directing your attention towards the Lord. What does that mean? That means your prayers is all about that. Lord, I want to have a fresh desire to focus on you. Lord, make everything else less significant. Lord, right now, I reorient my mind. I reorient my thoughts. I reorient my heart towards you. Those are the kinds of words the Lord wants to hear in the morning. Lord, you are priority. Lord, you are number one. Lord, I need you. Lord, I love you. Just directing your attention towards the Lord. And if you need help, there's some scriptures that we put for you. And it's okay just to read those scriptures. All of those scriptures 
will highlight the importance or an aspect of directing your attention towards the Lord. And so that will be your early morning time. 8.45. I know some of you are like, I thought that was early morning, 8.45. <laughs> We're calling that mid-morning. <laughs> We're going to have someone else leading prayer at 845. You're welcome to call in. Again, whether you call in or not, what we're asking you to do is you take time during your day. Some of you are going to be getting ready for work, getting ready for school. We understand that. We don't expect you to do nothing but pray all day. Now, if you can, hey, have at it, you know? But we understand that you're working, you're busy, you're doing things, you're taking care of your kids. But during those days, time slots, during, those, during that period of time. It may not be exactly 8.45, but maybe it's 9 o'clock, maybe it's 9.30, maybe it's 10 o'clock. In that mid-morning period, we're asking that you would make your focus now to be recognizing God's goodness and praising him for it. You may say, okay, what does that have to do with relationships? I thought this was all about relationships. It's, not, it's about first and foremost our relationship with the Lord. And this is how you're going to, you're going to allow that to be the model for how you relate to others. Recognizing. Sometimes one of the boundaries that we don't have is we allow a lot of negative thoughts into our relationship so we don't recognize the good. We don't thank the people in our lives. We don't recognize what they've done. We don't appreciate. And how can you change that? Let's reorient our, our hearts to, to not have that be a spillover into our relationship with the Lord. Let's stop it now and say, Lord, I'm going to have a different perspective towards you. And I'm going to take my mid-morning to, to recognize the goodness of the Lord. Amen? And again, you, you're free to read the scriptures. Let it be a meditation. Let it be something that you use, right? Some of you, and this is okay, some of you, you may only have 15 minutes each segment based on your day. I understand that. I don't want anyone to feel, right, like, oh man, I'm not praying enough. We want you to pray as much as you can, but what's going to help you more is not so much the duration, but the consistency. So if you are consistently checking in, see this, here's an example I can say, see this as like a text that you're giving to, to the Lord. You know, when you're in a relationship with someone, you generally don't just talk to them once during the day. Like, okay, it's eight o'clock, I'm gonna talk to you now. No, generally, even while you're working, you might get a text from someone. It's lunchtime, hey, what you doing? Oh, so they might send you a funny meme, or they might send you a joke, or they might send this, or, you know, what happens is that you're checking in with the Lord, and it's that consistent check-in throughout the day that causes something to be stirred on the inside of you. Sometimes we try to compartmentalize our lives too much, where it's like, okay, this is my work life, this is my family life, okay, and this is God, you know? And then we try to, you know, keep everything sectioned off, and God is like, I wanna bleed into every aspect. And so I need you to involve me at every point of the day. Check in. <laughs> Check in 15 minutes. Lord, it's midday. I just want to take a few minutes right now to acknowledge you. Da, 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 and you begin to thank him for all that he's done for your life. Now, this is a fast. So what we are saying is that you're not eating during this time. So even if you are working or you're going to school or you're running around, do not eat food, right? But take the time that you would normally eat and pray. Amen? Amen. All right. You guys are still with me? All right, let's turn the page, okay? Now, and then there's, after every section of prayer, of, of scriptures, there's also a prayer. This is just a guide, okay? So you can look at this prayer to just to capture the heart of what we're focusing on. 1145 is late morning. Again, there's a call time. So at 1145, there is a time that, that you, that, that's another time that you can call in, right? The call in number is at the front page. At the very top, you see the, you, everyone see the numbers? Okay, there's a call-in number right here. So 11.45, again, why are we doing this? This is just a pick-me-up. Maybe, maybe the morning was a little rough. You're like, oh, man, I kind of got off on a bad foot. I didn't really get into my, but you know what? Let me jump in on 11.45 because I know people are praying, and that can get, that can jump, that can get me going for the, for, for the next sex, uh, segment of my fast, right? So 11.45, you can call in. 
and there'll be people praying for 15 minutes over the phone. And what is the focus there? Transparency and having an openness to the Lord for correction and repentance. So that's what we're talking about at that moment. That's what we're praying about. Lord, I want to have an openness. Here's a scripture that I put down. I'll just read one. Psalm 139, 1 to 3. It says, Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. That's transparency. Lord, you see me. Lord, you know me. Lord, you, Lord, you know what I'm thinking. You know what I'm feeling. You know what I'm afraid of. You know what I'm dreaming of. Lord, I just want to just bear it all before you right now. Lord, I've been kind of out of sorts with certain things. Lord, I'm asking you to shape me and mold me and deal with, Lord, I repent of this. I know you've been dealing with me about this. I, I don't want to have any, any secrets. Even though I know you know all things, I want to bear my heart before you. I want to be open to you. I want to open my heart to you. That's what that prayer feels like. That's what this part of the fast during that day feels like. Amen? Okay. So now, Here's the fun part for some of us. <laughs> from 12 to 2, from 12 p.m., so noon to 2, we are breaking our fast <laughs> for we're going to have a midday meal. If you, this may not apply to every single person. Some people work overnight and they're sleeping during this time, and I get that. But if you have somewhat of a traditional schedule or you can make it where it's sort of like 9 to 5, we're asking you to not eat in the morning. We're asking you to take maybe one meal, just one. Somebody say one meal. One meal. Okay? Make it a healthy meal. Don't, you don't have to have oxtail, peas, and rice and, you know, pile up the plate. That's not going to help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep it light. Keep it light. It doesn't have to be vegetarian. You can have meat. I'm not saying, but you know, don't, don't feel like you have to stuff yourself. Keep it light. Keep it healthy. And then we resume the fast again at 2 p.m. All right? So we have a two-hour break fast, if you would, from 12 to 2, right? And that's where you can, you know, have a meal. All right? Okay, good. Let's, let's move on. So we're at now 2.45. 2.45 is our next call-in time. And the focus here is mid-afternoon prayer focus, committing ourselves towards loving people as Jesus loved us. So this is where we start directing our focus on our relationships with people. Okay? And so there's some scriptures there. There's a prayer focus. You can use that as fuel. Again, this is just a guide, but we're asking you to at least look at the guide. Connect to it, and then allow the Lord to build upon it for you personally. But this is a guide for you. Amen? Amen. All right. 545, early evening prayer. Committing ourselves to romantic love God's way. Committing ourselves to romantic love God's way. So we're asking you to take time to pray and meditate on Scripture. And these are the Scriptures that we have. There is no fear in love. So Here's one aspect. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Now, that's, of course, a reference to not us being afraid of the Lord, but there is no fear in love anywhere. Where there is perfect love, there is no fear. A lot of us are relating to people, and there's elements of fear. So we're not transparent. We're not open. We're not trusting. We have barriers. You know, we're, we're, we're suspicious. We're paranoid. We're angry. We're, we're, we're anxious. There's a whole bunch of things we are, and the root of it is a lack of the love of God. All right? So here's where we begin to unearth some things. Lord, I want to bear my heart here, and I'm asking you that you would help me to have an openness to romantic love. This applies to married people and non-married people, because there are married people who are not open to romance. There are married people who have barriers, who have fears, who don't have that healthy connection with their spouse either. And there are people who are single, who perhaps they have reservations, they have fears, or they're dating, and, and it's the same thing. God wants to reorient our passions, our hearts, and he wants us to really bear our soul and use the scripture 
to bring us into a healthy place in our love life. And so 545, the evening, the evening focus is committing ourselves to romantic love God's way. All right? All right, turning to the last page. And again, these are all scriptures you can use. We did our very best to just give you a few things that you can use as a guide and a prayer focus at the end, okay? And it's okay to even read the prayer verbatim and connect with it. And then, again, then use it as your own prayer and then let it spring into your own words. So don't feel like, oh, I'm not being real and genuine if I'm just reading. No, sometimes you're reading something, but it's allowing your heart to connect to the spirit of what we're doing and then allows you to pray even more personally and specifically to you. You guys are following me with that? All right, so the last, the last time, 8.45, this is another call-in time. Again, you, you're free to call in at 8.45. If you missed the call, that's okay. What we're asking, though, is that during this evening period of time and beyond, right, you're, you're praying, and our focus here would be positioning ourselves for love. <clears throat> positioning ourselves for love. All right, so I'm going to just take time to read the prayer so you can really capture the focus. If you, if you go down a little bit, so you skip the few verses that I have and look at the prayer. It says, Lord, I desire to be married. Now, if you're married, this is where I'm asking you to pray for those who desire to be married. This is where you begin to invest in the single people of our church and say, Lord, for those who desire to be married. And then you begin to pray this prayer. And if you're here and you're not married, and you don't want to be married, still pray the same prayer for those who want to be married. And then pray for yourself and say, Lord, am I okay? You know? It's a, uh, <laughs> all right. I'm <laughs> just, just checking. <laughs> all right. So let's read. He says, Lord, I desire to be married. According to your word, marriage is honorable and good. That's a key thing. There's some people who don't believe that marriage is honorable and good. They have doubts about it. Is it really good? Is it honorable? Is it worth it? Is it worth it for a man to be married? Is it worth it for a woman to be married? Is it healthy? Should I do this? No, it is honorable and it is good. So what we're doing is we're aligning our hearts. And as you're, you're praying these prayers every day, every day, right? Your heart is going to be conditioned to begin to see love and relationships the way God created it to be seen. All right? Cause me to remain in hope and in full expectation for this blessing. I refuse to believe that there isn't anyone suitable for me. You know how people believe that? There's no one. Uh, no one gets me. No one. I don't really connect. No. I refuse to believe that. There is no lack in God's kingdom. So by the end of this fast, no one is ever going to say there's no good women out there. There's no good men out there. What you're going to say is there's no lack in the kingdom of God. If it's good and God instituted it, then it's there. There's no lack. Amen? I'm removing all placeholders. Uh-oh, this, 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 this is where it gets. I'm removing all placeholders from my life. Get to the deleting and, you know, the blocking. Delete those text messages too. And the DMs. I will only entertain men slash women of God who are in pursuit of a godly relationship. We're, this is the tension. We're now creating tension. That means when you are removing these things, it's going to create a tension. Amen? All right. You guys are good? You guys think about the raffle later on? Is that what it is? You're like, Pastor, this is good, but I just want that TV. You know, can we get... The TV's coming. Don't worry about it. But we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go through this. All right. Thank you, Lord, that you join people together. I rest my hope in you that you will bring me together with the right person at the right time. Just as you gave Solomon, Ruth... And Esther, wisdom in relationships. Father, give me wisdom to attract and sustain a godly relationship. You know why we have all these podcasts and all these relationship talks? The world is thirsty for wisdom. They're recognizing we're doing it wrong. Who has the answer? Who can speak 
and give me the answer to my, 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 my pain points when it comes to relationships? How many know that God has the answer to those? So what we need to do is ask the Lord for wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. Just as you gave Solomon wisdom, you gave Esther wisdom, you gave Ruth wisdom, I receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. Open my eyes to see and receive the love of my life. I receive this now. Amen. Isn't this good? Come on, put your hands together if you're excited about this. So get a good meal today. And it's not terrible. Believe me, it's not. It's not that bad. It's just what you, you are eating, you know. It's just one meal a day. Stay hydrated. There's a, there's a few points that I put up on top. Fasting guide, you'll see it says points to keep in mind. The point of fasting is to what? It's to pray. God is not moved by your lack of eating. That doesn't mean anything to him, that you didn't eat. We don't eat to create space for prayer and to highlight the need for prayer and to remind ourselves that we will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's the point of fasting. It's not to impress God. God is not impressed by the fast. He wants to hear your prayers. Amen? Two, Limit social media slash TV and other entertainment sources. If you're praying regularly throughout, like this is like six sessions throughout the day, you should be limiting. It sh that should somewhat be easy. Stay hydrated. Okay, when breaking the fast during midday, eat light and healthy. And this is a very important one. Keep a fasting journal. Document everything the Lord teaches you during this time. Because I am expecting God to teach you some things, reveal some things to you. I am expecting. Now, if you get off to a slow start, don't be discouraged. Just pick up. It's okay. Pick up. Don't be discouraged. Just pray. Just move forward. You're going to see. You're going to see. You're going to start to pick up momentum, and it's going to bring you into a new place. It's going to bring us to a new place. In Jesus' name, amen? Are we excited about that? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we start tomorrow. Father, we ask you that you, Lord God, encourage us by your spirit. For we are endeavoring to go further and more passionate, Lord God, for the things of God, for your heart, for our lives, for your heart, for people. And we just pray, Lord God, that this fast would be fruitful, that, Lord God, we would be focused. Some of us, Lord, we may have a challenge disconnecting from our routine. Help us. Give us grace to disconnect to certain unfruitful routines that we've engaged in. And give us, Lord, the presence of mind to press into the things of the Spirit. Lord, we're asking you in the name of Jesus, give us grace to see you and to see, Lord God, the, the power, Lord, of praying consistently. We're asking that you would do this in our lives for us, for us as a church. And let it spread to others, Lord God. Those who are watching, Lord God, even home right now. Those who may not even be part of our church. Maybe they're just visiting for the first time. Whoever, Lord God. We just pray that they will take this and it will bring blessing to them. We pray this now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, towards the end, we're going to do a fun thing. We're going to do a raffle. So... You guys excited about that? Yes. I'm not going to preach long. Give me 14 minutes. <laughs> 14 minutes. I want to just share a few things with you. <laughs> Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. You know, what's interesting as we close off our conference weekend... I did not know until they told me, because we would send it to our production team, I did not know in advance what our speakers would be speaking about. All right, I just kind of told them the theme of our conference is life is still good, you know, gave them the spirit of what we're doing, but I didn't know what scriptures they would be using. I didn't know what they would be focusing on. And um, to hear Bishop DeAndre Salter, first and foremost, 
Yeah, going from faith to faith. Wasn't that amazing? That was awesome. And then Pastor Clifford jumping into Romans also. I was amazed for many reasons, but one is because the Lord also led me to Romans. And I'm going to just share a few scriptures in Romans 8 to close out this, this conference weekend, if you would, illustrating that life is still good. Amen? That's the theme that we're always going to be holding on to. Romans 8, looking at verse 31. I've taught this a few times, a couple of times, I think. So some of you may be familiar with this, but many of you have not heard this before. It says, what then shall we say in response to these things? Let me actually use a new King James. Let me, let me go there. That's my favorite. Romans 8, 31, New King James. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Life is still good, and I always remind myself of this scripture. Whenever there is something that seems to be opposed to me, challenging me, difficult, a situation I can't figure out on my own. Here's one of my go-to scriptures. God is for me. I love that. Now, he's more than for me. He's with me. He's in me. He's upon me. And all of those things have a specific purpose. But let's just highlight the fact that he is for me. When someone is for you, that means they are pushing you forward. They are aiding, abetting. They are helping. They are, they are your biggest cheerleader. They are in your corner. That's who God is. God is in your corner. He is for you. He is for your progress. He is for you finishing the course that he has laid out for you. He is for you doing life well. So when things come against you, let's, let's talk. What are some things that come against us? Let's be honest. Relationships, Relationships. persecution, persecution. Sickness. sickness, just, just failure. failure, opposition everywhere. You can see things coming against you, frustrating you. What you have to do in that moment is stop and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. If God is for me, and that's a big, that we, we have to answer that question. So let me ask you, is God for you? Yes. You sure about that? Yes. All right. Well, if he is for you, the question is, who can be against us? It's a rhetorical question. It's a question that begs, you know, no real answer because the answer is clear. No one can stand against you. So what you need to do is look at the opposition, look at the frustration, look at the things that do oppose you, and look at it in light of this. God is for me. This will not stop me, define me, frustrate me, cause me to fail. God is for me. He's my biggest supporter, my biggest cheerleader. He's in my corner. He's helping me. You're for me. So what we need to do is direct our attention to the Lord on that and say, Lord, I'm feeling frustrated right now. I'm feeling a bit frustrated right now. I'm flustered right now. I'm feeling unheard right now, unseen right now. I'm feeling unappreciated right now. Lord, I'm feeling like my, I just can't get through to the people I need to get through to right now. Lord, you're for me. What's your advice? You, you want to give me advice. Why? Because you're for me. Lord, what is the answer here? You want to give me an answer because you're for me. You don't, wanna, you don't want me to be stagnated, frustrated. You don't want me to fail in this moment. So, Lord, I believe you're for me. What is the answer? And this is why when we go into this fast, you're going to hear a lot of answers. Let me just throw this in. The key is to live a fasted life. 
We're helping you here. But if you really want the secret sauce, live a fast life in the most purest way. <laughs> Amen? It's the fasted life, living a life regularly where you take a day or two out of the month just to be with the Lord. That's what keeps you in a certain rhythm. And isn't it interesting if you look at it, medically speaking, physiologically, biologically, all the alikis, <laughs> you will see health benefits to it. They will show that your body does need to recycle and it needs a period of fasting to remove impurities. I believe that God is so wise. Like, not only did he create our bodies to live like this, but he even gave this as a spiritual secret. Fast to me, and it'll even have an effect on your body. Amen? He's for me. Somebody say, he's for me. Verse 32. He who did not spare his own son. This is how you know he's for you. Yeah. How do I know he's for me? Because it says, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Yeah. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Think about that. How do I know that he's for me? The number one reason you know it's because he gave you his only begotten son. That's the reason. Lord, you gave me Jesus. You didn't spare him, but you delivered him. You delivered him. So if you delivered him to me, if you allowed him to be sacrificed for me, how shall you not freely with him give me all things? You understand? If you've given me your very best, you've given me Jesus, you've given me your son. What is a husband? What is a wife? What are children to you? What is a home? What is this? Is this too hard? But Jesus was easy? It was Jesus just, you know, yeah, you can have that. But this, whoa, inflation is real. I don't know if I could do that. No, I can do all things. How do I know? How do I know he can do all things? How do I know he's for me? He did not spare his son, but he delivered him up for me. That's amazing. It always comes back to the cross. When your focus is, what did God already do? Sometimes we're focusing on what I need him to do now. I need him to do this. I want him to do this. Lord, will you do this? Lord, I'm waiting for this. Focus on what he already did. Focus on the greatest thing he could ever do for you. Focus on the fact that he did something that no one else could ever do for you. And rest in that aspect of his goodness towards you. And watch what he brings to pass in your life. Somebody say, he's for me. Okay, I think I lied about the 14 minutes. Maybe 22, okay? <laughs> Moving forward. Is this helping you, though? 33. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Have you ever been accused of something? Falsely accused? Yeah. Have you ever been accused of being something you know you're not? Saying something you know you didn't say? Doing something you know you didn't do? Being something you know you're not? The Bible says, who will bring a charge against God's elect? You are God's elect. God elected you, chose you, handpicked you, said you are mine. And then he placed you. He placed you in his kingdom. And the question is, who is going to bring a charge against God's elect? Who, who has the right, who has the audacity to say, hey, this person is this, this person is that. This person doesn't deserve God's best. This person doesn't deserve forgiveness. This person doesn't deserve... He, no, he said, wait a minute, who is going to... That's how you got to you gotta have the high pitch. Who? You know, you, you know when you're confused? Who are you talking to? 
you, 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 know, you, know, you know that who? I think that's how Paul meant it. Who will bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. What does it mean that he justifies? The word justify means he has declared you righteous. I want you to imagine a, a jury saying, we find this person not guilty. And then the judge says, you are free to go. That's what, when the, when the judge says you are free to go, he is justifying you. He's saying you have been declared righteous and now you are free to go. And one of the things that we are accused of most is that we're unworthy of God's best, unworthy of God's love, and we are a failure in God's eyes. And a lot of times those words come from the enemy and they come from our own condemnation that we hold into our heart. I wanna encourage you right now to reject all forms of condemnation and say, I have been God's, I am God's elect and no one will bring a charge against me. He justifies me. He justifies you today. Amen? Amen? Today you're justified. Hallelujah. 34. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. I love that. He makes intercession for who? That's right. Jesus is the intercessor for us. He is the mediator. And if you've, you've been around, you know I've taught this many times. As Christians, we don't intercede for other Christians. We supplicate. There is no gap. You know, people say intercession is standing in the gap. There is, here's the good news, people. There is no gap between you and the Lord. So when a believer needs to pray for you, they're not standing in the gap. There is no gap. They're standing with you. Father, I come with my brother. I come with my sister. And we come in the name of Jesus. You can't do that with an unbeliever, so you have to intercede. Lord, be merciful. Lord, give them more time. Jesus stands in the gap because he is the mediator. And the Bible says that he is the one who intercedes for us as the one who is in the gap. He is the gap. He's the one who stands there. He's the one who brings us to the Father. He's the one who has reconciled us. And here's the good news. He's praying for you. I don't think you guys got that. Do you realize that Jesus is praying for you? He makes intercession for you. I think Jesus is a good prayer. I don't know. I think, I know, I think he knows how to pray. That's why we go back to the, same question, to, to the first question. If God be for you. Wait a minute. I got Jesus praying for me? Oh, I'm good. I got Jesus interceding for me? I'm good. No matter how it looks like, life is still good because Jesus is praying for you. And if Jesus is interceding for you, that means Jesus has hope that things will turn around. He's not praying for no reason. He's not praying because it's a done deal. You're going to fail. <laughs> He's not praying because it's hopeless. He's interceding. Because so long as you have breath in your lungs, God is not done with you. God is not finished with you. All right, let me wind down. Are you still with me? All right, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Our tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. Mm -mm, none of these things. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And this is a time of persecution for the Christians. And if you don't know, and I think you do, many Christians today are being persecuted. Like their life is on the line. I know in America we don't, we don't think of it much, which is sad. But many of our brothers and sisters are under persecution. When they read this scripture, they read it a little differently. They take comfort in this. We're killed all day long. There are many martyrs for Christ. People who are really preaching the gospel on the front lines and their life is on the line. And when they read this, they're like, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It could seem like life isn't good in a situation where my life is literally in peril. Like our problems, what we call it first world problems, our problems is that 
you know, I, I want to get, I, I want to get this car, but I don't qualify. I want to move in this neighborhood, but you know, I, I'm still working out this, I'm still working out that. That's first world. There's other kind of problems. There's other Christians out there. They ain't thinking about that. They're thinking about, are we going to live past tonight? Because we're surrounded on every side. When they read this scripture, it says we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. You know how a shepherd or someone who's going to take sheep, they're counting the sheep. Okay, we're going to take this, take this. And the sheep is thinking, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm done. My life is over. And he says, this is how we look. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Oh, but look at verse 37. Yet in all these things, in all of this, we are more than conquerors. Sometimes you just got to accept things by faith. Because I know it doesn't sound like I'm conquering. When I paint that picture of someone who's under persecution. But this is the posture of a believer. And we, especially in America, should take comfort that if, wait a minute, if this is the posture of people who are under persecution, how much more? Yeah. How much more should I have this posture that in all these things, name the things, whatever things you're going through, name them. In that, I'm still more than a conqueror through him who loved me. I don't know if that's good enough news for you, but that's something to rejoice over. Name the things. Pastor, why am I struggling? Why am I struggling? Why am I struggling? Because you're not saying the word. You need to say, in this, I'm more than a conqueror. In this challenge, I'm more than a conqueror. What will happen when you begin to declare who you are in Christ? You start taking the posture that you ought to take. And then the flow of God, the grace of God, the power of God begins to show up and deal with what you're working with and dealing with and struggling with. God doesn't want you to be in perpetual struggle. He wants you to experience victory, but you got to align your words with what he has said about you. And he said, in all of these things, you are still more than a conqueror. Where am I more than conquerors in this place? Hallelujah. I'm persuaded. Are you persuaded? I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. I don't care. That's why we shouldn't worry. I'm persuaded. Things present or things to come. Worrying is often, if not always, about what you think is going to come. He says, I'm persuaded. Glory to God. That neither death or life. Bring it. Angels, principalities, powers. Doesn't matter to me. Things present, things presently happening, things that are going to happen. Nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Now, let's not miss the point here. If we are more than conquerors through his love, and none of these things that I just read will ever separate you from his love. That means in every single conceivable situation, because you're loved by God, and none of those things will separate you from his love. As long as God's love is real in your life, you are more than a conqueror in all of these things. You're more than a conqueror. Amen. So I'm declaring today, life is still good because of who God has made you to be. He has made you first and foremost loved by God. Yes. I said this before. If you want to do some research on it, get a strong concordance. If you want to do a word study on all the things that God has called us, he's called us a lot of things. Holy, he's called us righteous, he's called us his children, he's called us light, he's called us salt, he's called us a lot of things. But the one thing that he's called us more than anything is the word beloved. Beloved appears more than any other word as an identity point of who you are. You are loved by God. And if you're loved by God, you're more than a conqueror. I declare today you are conquering in Jesus' name. Every mountain shall become a plain in your life. That was my prayer earlier this week. Lord, make every mountain a plain. Make every mountain a plain before the people's eyes.
everything that has been stubborn against you, everything that has been opposed to you, the Lord is making it a plane before you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Oh, we praise you, Father. We bless you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, life is still good. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Satisfy, Lord, the needs of your people today. And even through this fast, Lord God, I declare that their needs are met in every conceivable way. Fill us with joy to overflowing. Even in hard situations that we may be in, hard places, things that are not ideal, not comfortable, I pray right now that we will begin to experience joy. Yes, Lord God. There's going to be a new measure of joy in your life. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. As I close, I want to give a special invitation to everyone who may not have made this critical decision. The decision I'm talking to you about is a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life. I'm always very careful to be clear about what I'm saying because I don't want you to misunderstand it. I'm not asking if you've never prayed before. I'm going to assume you have. I'm not asking if you've never been to church before. It's unlikely that you did go to church before. I'm not asking if you, even if you believe in God. I'm not asking about that. I'm asking you, have you received Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior? Have you surrendered your life and said, this day I'm acknowledging, acknowledging you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. I'm giving you my life. I'm repenting of my sin, of unbelief, of rejecting you, of running away from you, and now I'm coming to you, receiving you as Lord and Savior. Many of us have done that. Maybe there's some who haven't. I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus. You may ask, well, how do I do that? You simply ask him, Lord, come into my life. I want to help you. I want to pray with you, lead you in what we call a salvation prayer. This prayer is simply saying, Lord, I come to you, and I'm asking you to do a work in me, change me. I recognize that you're Lord. I recognize you died for my sin, and I'm no longer going to run from you. I'm no longer going to be a doubter or a cynic. I'm no longer going to be one who pushes you aside. I'm surrendering my life right now, right here. Boldly, before all these people, I'm saying, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. If you're here, under the sound of my voice, I would love for you to raise your hand if that's you. If you need to make that decision, I need to receive Christ as my Lord and as my Savior. Raise it high if that's you. I want to see you. I want to pray with you. I want to make sure that you have made the Lord Jesus your Lord and Savior. Anybody, anywhere, before we move on. I want to give you the time that you need. Maybe you're thinking about it. Maybe you're thinking, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know if I can. Here's the good news. The Lord will help you. He's the one who helps you live for him. You can't do it on your own. He will do it through you. You just have to be a willing person, a willing vessel to say, Lord, here I am. Anybody, anywhere in this building, I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I see that one hand. I see that one hand. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? I need to receive Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to give my life to Him. Would you come up? Would you come up? I saw the hand, your hand raised. Would you come up? I want to pray with you. Come on, let's give Him a hand. you bro I'm so proud of you and I ask you to come up not to embarrass you or anything like that just to let you know that you were made you're making the best decision of your life what's your name Jediah praise the Lord the Lord is going to do a great work in you I'm going to pray with you right now you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior amen amen say this with me say father today I accept your son Jesus as my Lord and Savior I believe he died for me, rose the third day, and is alive today. Be the Lord of my life. Change me on the inside. Do a work in me. I give you my heart. I give
give you my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yarasuta. Would you extend your hands towards them? I just want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for this son of yours, Jediah, Lord God. And I pray that, Lord, you would do a sanctifying work through and through in his life. That he would be established in the kingdom. He would flourish and grow. That you would do, Lord God, what only you can do. I pray, Father God, that you would have an imprint on him, that he would have a hunger for your word, a hunger for your presence, a hunger for prayer. Lord, sovereignly, I pray that everything that you would desire for him would come to pass. Lord, oh my God, I pray that the brightness of your call on his life would shine in the mighty name of Jesus. I stand against the work of the enemy, and I declare every work of Satan assigned against you must fail fast in the name of Jesus. And I demand that God's very best be your portion. His peace flow through your mind, flow through your body, flow in your home. Lord, do a fresh work even in his home life. Make all the arrangements, the rearranging, Lord God, whatever needs to be rearranged, bring order where there is disorder in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord loves you, man. We love you. God bless you. We have some more. Praise God. Stand here for me. Just, just stand here. God bless you. Look at these people. God bless you all. God bless you all. Oh, we love, we love when people give their lives to the Lord, even when they're small like this. Because the Lord is awakening them up to something. Sometimes we look at this, oh, they just don't understand. No, they understand. Their spirit is kicking. They're like, something, I need this, something. And it's going to be an imprint on the rest of their life. You want Jesus? What's your name? What's your name? Cameron, you want Jesus as well? Praise God. Can you lift up your hands? And say this with me. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me and I believe that you are alive today be alive in me save me from every bad thing I've done keep me in your arms be my best friend I will love you and I will serve you all of my life in Jesus name amen The Lord bless you. Father, I thank you for these two young boys, Lord God. And I pray that you, Lord God, would have your hand upon them mightily. Lord, I pray that you would establish them in the kingdom. And that, Lord, this moment will never escape their memory. They will always remember that they have surrendered their life to you. Lord, let this be the beginning of a fresh new start. The beginning, Lord God, of fresh new encounters with you. I pray that they would dream of you. They will experience spiritual dreams, Lord God, of you, that you would lead them, Lord God, by the Holy Spirit. Do a work in them, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Do we have the, the, the little booklet? Our usher's going to give you a booklet. You can give it to the die. You can follow him. You can follow him. Give them another hand. These two boys. good. Maybe you might have a clue. Can you make sure they have the book? Because I know they're, they're by the, the table, the cooey table. Oh, we're so grateful. Oh, God is good. Mm, okay. All right. Just had to appreciate what God is doing in this moment. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's never get tired of salvation. Amen? Amen. Now, we're going to do the raffle in just a little bit. But before I do, I have one other acknowledgement I have to make. Um, I need to acknowledge some special people. 
yeah, I, I cannot make this mistake of overlooking these people. I mean, these are people that we are most excited about. Aren't we? These are people that we have prayed for. These are people that we are excited that they have finally said, yes, I'll visit. <laughs> Who are we talking about, Life Church? First time visitors. So, if this is your very first time, would you stand to your feet? We want to acknowledge you if you're here for the very first time at Life Church. Come on, stand to your feet. We welcome you. We welcome you. God bless you. God bless you all. Yes. Yes. God bless you. We're so grateful for you. We're so grateful for you. You could have been anywhere this morning, and we, we know that, but you chose to be with us, and we don't take that lightly. So thank you for spending time with us. Um, thank you for being with us today. We hope that you receive something that will be a blessing to you. Come back again here at Life Church. We say it this way, come one, bring one. <laughs> bring one, bring all, amen. I'm gonna call up uh, Melissa and Sarah. They're going to present our raffle drawing, amen. Who's excited about winning a TV? All right. For, for those, oh, they're rolling, they're rolling out the TV right now. <laughs> All right, they got the raffle. Come on, guys, let's move a little quick if we can. Yeah, we, we, we need that little suspense music. That's good. <laughs> oh, you got it. I look very nice. Thank you for your contribution, those that donated, those that bought tickets, those that told their family, friends, and coworkers. Thank you. Um, we're just missing one more person, Star. She's the one that started all of this. So shout out to Star, if you're watching Star. We see you, girl. Uh, okay, this is a TV. If y'all were here yesterday, ain't no roach on top. It's a bow on top. Y'all caught that. Too late. You could, you could still donate. Yes, you can still donate at NY Life Church. Um, go to the bottom, click on um, where I'm moving, and you can still donate. We appreciate it. Thank you. We're taking donation all year, okay? Yes. We want a building, yes? We want our own. Ownership. Okay. Go ahead. Don't jump us. Whoever win, win. Please note, when we do the drawing and we call the name, we do have all the information like who sold the tickets, contact information so we can contact the person. A lot of you sold tickets to your coworkers, friend of a friend, a neighbor of a neighbor. So we do have all the information, FYI. All right, Sarah, come on. Come on. <laughs> Nakia won it, but I don't know. She's been claiming it for a long time. Come on, drum roll. Hey, come on. Who do you have there? Come on. <laughs> you read it. Karen. <laughs> we have Joseph, and it's sold by Joey. Can you confirm? I'm sorry, it's sold by Miranda. Oh, Josh. That says Josh. Oh, Josh, I'm sorry. And it's sold by Miranda. Do you know? So give it up for Miranda. She's right here. She has sold the winning ticket. And we have all of the information. Shout out to Miranda. She took it to her job. She sold over 80 something tickets to her friends and family. Yes. <laughs> so guess what? 
hard work do pay off, and we thank you. We thank you for building with us. We thank you for being here. We thank you all. Please join us in the next one. It's not too late. That's amazing. Come on, 80 tickets. Come on, let's give it up for Miranda one more time. Miranda, for what? You, you, you look embarrassed. You look, are you embarrassed? Oh, okay. She's like, uh. You know you're gonna win. That's why she sat up front. I've never seen Miranda sit up front. <laughs> she was like, let me just let me just be right here, you know. But no, but congratulations to Josh. Josh is a co-worker of yours? Okay, so Josh, congratulations. Hopefully he's watching, if not, but I'm glad you're here because you're the one who sold it. All right, praise God. Amen. Let's give it up for her one more time. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to receive today's offering before we dismiss. Amen. Are we are giving church? I want to tell you this. I, I'm, sometimes I don't want to let it out the bag so quickly. So I'm controlling myself a little bit. <laughs> but we are, believe it or not, in negotiation for an, an additional space to this space uh, for our children. We recognize that you know the spacing is what it is, and we can carve out some space. And if we need to, we will in in, in the other side of this uh, level here. Uh, but upstairs, there's a little bit of a challenge with some of the things that we want to do. But I believe, and this is why I want you to pray, I believe the Lord is opening up another door for us, and it will work. It will work very, very well, believe it or not. Um, but pray. Pray that every door that God wants to open will be opened, that we can do ministry more effectively. We have children. We see them. I'm talking about toddler ministry and older children. We see you guys. We love you guys. We love our ministry team, our children's ministry team. Let's give it up for them. They are excited about ministering to your children. We have not forgotten about them. And so this, 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 this raffle that we did, a portion of that is going towards that. And we are in negotiation of some things. So keep it in prayer, okay? Keep, keep these developments in prayer and keep continuing to support as you do. Amen? So... As you know, uh, we're receiving today's tithes and offerings. You're able to do that through the giving options on the screen. If you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand. Our ushers will be happy to serve you with an envelope in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. done so, just stand to your feet. We're going to dedicate our offering in unity in the spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Hold each other accountable. Support each other with this fast, okay? Encourage somebody, all right? Let's do this together in Jesus' name. Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity to give today. We're so grateful for the tithes and the offerings that we have opportunity to present to you. Lord, you have blessed us with what we are able to offer back unto you. So we just say thank you for this privilege of giving, giving, Lord God, towards what you're doing. Father, let this work prosper. Let the work of the kingdom prosper. Lord, let it meet the needs of this community. Grow, Lord God, your people spiritually, materially, numerically. Grow this community of believers, Lord God, so that they have greater impact in their sphere of influence. Grow this church, Lord, that we have greater impact in the Eastern York community. Father, we're asking that as we give, you would cause every dollar, 
every, every, every gift, Lord God, to go further the kingdom of God and its agenda. Father, we are in partnership with you. We're in partnership with what you're doing. And we thank you that it is so. I, I pronounce a blessing over every tither, over every giver of offerings, Lord God. Bless them. Bless their household in the mighty, precious name of Jesus. We thank you for it now in advance. Amen and amen. Amen. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Team. Amen. What an amazing time in service today. I pray that today's message revitalizes your spirit and energizes you for the week to come. Listen, we would love to connect with you online or in person. We look forward to seeing you. Have a great week. God bless. Thank you.